Alright guys, 505 RC here with the uh, Sunset Bronco. Gonna do all the brass to it. And uh, no music, none of that. I don't have time or editing for that, so I'm gonna just uh, do it all raw. Kind of like live, but pre-recorded. And uh, we'll put all the brass on there, that way I can describe stuff if something doesn't work or whatever. And uh, hopefully I can show you guys in detail. I'm mainly going to have the phone right here while I'm building it. So, um, yeah, that's about it. I'm going to get started on it right now. So, I'm going to set up the phone and I'll be right back. Alright guys, we're rolling. I don't know how long it's going to last. For some reason my phone videos aren't lasting as long as they should be. But Here we go. I'm going to... Start it from the very beginning. That way you guys can see the whole entire deal. Ellie, go back somewhere. Alright guys, got this bad boy to the chassis. Now we gotta start taking the wheels off. All virgin truck here haven't taken nothing off other than the motor and ESC but I haven't taken the wheels none of you know nothing crazy just servo and motor and ESC here we go get these wheel caps off and uh, I'll try and tell you guys all the sizes too of uh, tools to take stuff off if you have aftermarket tools and not the bag tools that uh, come with the vehicle I'm going to lay all my tools out real quick that way it makes it uh, a little easier and faster to uh, hopefully accomplish this uh, build here all right so we got the seven millimeter hopefully you guys can see that for the uh, wheel nuts and this tool set is the dynamite uh, dynamite dynamite whatever you want to call it tool set from my local hobby store for 30 some bucks I think it was 25 to 30 bucks and uh, I guess we'll start with the front that would probably be the hardest and I always like to start with the hardest part first then the easiest and uh, so I might have to break this up in segments guys do episode one two and three or something depending on how long my phone will record I would do it with the uh, GoPro, but uh, I don't know if you guys would hear me that well and such, and it breaks it up into a bunch of little videos for some reason, so I'm not, if I go on GoPro Editor, you guys won't hear me talking, so I might as well just do it with my phone in segments with my phone, because I can post each one right off the bat. And that'll just be easier for everyone. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to take all the wheels off. All the way around. Oh, the other side came off for me. Cool. We'll stack them over here to the side. And then we'll flip the truck over. Upside down. Well, I got a little bit rub on the axles. Not too bad. Thank goodness. All right, guys, I'm going to open up all the front packaging for the front, for all the brass for the front of it. That way we can hopefully see what I'm getting into here and uh, see what all I got to take off to accomplish this. I mean, I've had my first TRX4 apart to change axles because I've broken axle shafts in the front. There you go guys, here's the color out of the package. Looks machined very well. 
looks really nice. I will be using blue Loctite on everything on this build. And uh, I'll keep the package of screws with the certain pieces. That way I don't get them all mixed up and, and uh, lost and stuff. That way I know what screws are to what and where they go and all that fun stuff. I should have really unpackaged all this stuff first, but it looks like it has like a polyurethane type bushing on these spindles. I know that's not the correct uh, word, but I'll call them spindles anyway. So set those guys here. We got the shoulder screws and uh, the inner like bearing screws or something. That's what's going to be a pain, guys. Is getting these bearings out and putting them in the new stuff because the other bearings in the in the other TRX4 were a pain to do so I'm not looking forward to that okay guys we got this brass diff cover it says 76 kgs or G's grams sucker is pretty heavy man it's machined really well I like how they have the 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 drain cap for the diff and it's actually threaded in there I thought it was just a fake one but I think you can actually unscrew it but uh, you can't put fluid in there obviously there's no sills and stuff <sighs> Sorry guys, I keep having my kids interrupt me here. Anyway, there's the diff. You know, I don't get my kids, man. They climb on a tree, comes in here, oh, I got scratched, Dad. It's like, well, yeah, because you're climbing on a tree. I mean, what do you expect? It's going to happen if you climb a tree, right? I mean, branches, bark, it's going to scratch you. Got to be careful. So I told him, you know, you're going to get scratched if you're not watching out. But anyway, let's get these covers out. Man, those are nice. They look sharp. I like that. So we got these diff portal diff covers on the front here. These will be on the back as well. That's what I'm not looking forward is the bearings in here. Taking those old ones out, that's going to be a pain, more than likely. So if I can get an Allen wrench and just pop them out like that, I don't know. But I'll find out when we get to that point. So here's these diff covers here. Alright, close my knife so I don't cut myself. And uh, let's start taking her apart, guys, and see what what we can get done before the camera runs out or the phone stops recording and uh, hopefully we get a lot done here take this off here should be a most of them should be like a uh, what is it a 2.5 see here yeah it's a 2.5 these should be a 1.5 on the front here so we'll get the 1.5 out and pop these off maybe nope it's just jumping around in there because the thread lock so let me grab a actual allen wrench here see if we can't get it to come off this stupid thing will go in there and it doesn't want to yep see here we go there we go guys now we got it going the thread lock from the machine shop or assembly line anyway take both sides pop them loose on both on both sides of the truck here yeah, you guys can barely see see it let me move the stuff closer view here here we go there we go. I 
All right, these guys come all the way out. They're not a grub screw. They go all the way through just like the SCX-10 axles and such. I don't know if the SCX-10s, I think they're like that too with these hex nuts. So we'll take that guy all the way off and I'll put the screw right back in so I don't lose it. And I know what it's to because it's in there. So we'll take that guy all the way out, slide it out, put this guy right back in there so I don't lose it. That's how come I know where everything's at when I take stuff apart where it goes because usually I put it back in the piece that I take it off from. Oh, that's going to be a bummer, man, with these fender wells they have on to get this top one off. Because they have these fender wells mount mounted. I wonder if it's just these two screws right here that come off and the whole fender well just pops right off. That would be nice and easy. Let's see here, guys. Because <laughs> they get to the top screw, that's going to be a pain with these fender wells on. I have to be sitting here turning it forever with a regular style Allen wrench. Oh wow, the whole, it's the whole shock tower assembly. That's amazing. I can't just pop that off. Here we go. There's a top screw by the body post for these fender wells and I think hopefully that's it. Nope. There's two more there. Okay. Take this one off. Take this other side off too. Alright, there's that screw. have to take these two off for the center plate right here which are bigger I'm gonna take that center plate off right here so we can um oh wow that's for the shocks okay that's cool so these long screws that go in the top right here I go into this here I mean right here well you can't see the other side but it's kind of like that but it goes into here it holds the shock on there that's nuts that one comes out but this one's not probably because due to the fact the rest of it's still bolted on on this side but I take these screws out on this chassis plate here for the fender wells take these off That way we can get the fender wells off and out of the way. There we go. So there's that one. Should be able to pop the shock right out. Oh, the shock's not wanting to come out like the other side. That's weird. Okay. Because this side, the shock already has come out. And it's acting like it's to that screw. What the heck is going on here? Oh, did I take the wrong screw out? I did. See? Took the wrong screw out, guys. <laughs> My bad. Now I need to pop the shock back in here before I take the, uh, before I put the screw back in there. So, let's line it up, hopefully. I have to turn it on its side so I can see it. Come on, line up. All right. I think I got it. Nope. I got to totally put this thing on the side. There we go. All right, guys. Sorry for the delay. But uh, that's how it goes, man. When you're dealing with a new, a new rig and a bunch of stuff to it. Now, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to just leave the dang shock off. It's too much of a dang hassle right now. 
I'm gonna have to take the shock off that other one too, maybe. That way I can have the fender wheels completely off of it. But, uh. This guy completely out. So set these right here for now. And we gotta get on the side of this guy. Just like so. Slide that one off. And uh, it's these screws right here, guys, right next to the shock. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, it's right there next to the shock. It's only those two, so that should come right off. So you can take the fender wells off to access your hub carrier and stuff, or in your C-hub to take that off so there we go there's the body post that comes off and then we got the oh nice they have that all attached to your uh, fender well the, the what you may call it link the sway bar type link pan hard bar there we go that's what I'm looking for the pan hard bar so you gotta take this screw out so you can take it off the pan hard bar to take your fender well completely off. And that's the other screw to that. So we'll just pile all those up right there. Because I'll remember how those go and where they go. There we go. Get this off. So we can take this off the shock here. So it's not in the way. There we go. Alright, now we flip this guy over. And let the shocks dangle. If that one wants to. And then we'll fold them and lay it down like that. Alright guys. So, now I can get... Oh, what happened here? Oh yeah, I already had that one loose. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, these these sleeves should be a lot better than these little plastic. Oh no, those aren't plastic. Those are metal. And they fit right in those sleeves. Perfect. And that's why they give you shoulder screws. So they don't even have, have that guy swiveling on the screw itself so we'll set all this stuff over here but we got shoulder screws right there which will be a lot better so that's cool so I don't see a right or left stamped on this guy so I guess that doesn't matter and I will just go in place of right there so we'll set this here and before I uh, get lost on this we'll set up the parts that go all on this side like that yep perfect so we'll set these like that and what I can do before I finish taking this apart is we cut this little bag open here and uh, get this open and uh, get the shoulder screws out. Oh, it does mark. They are marked, guys. It says left side. It has a left and an L and an R to mark which side they go on to. That is cool. Same with these right here. Right and left. So I'm mixing up parts. So this should be the left side of the truck. So we're good here. I need this one. Right? No, this is the left side. This is the right side. Yeah, here we go. Getting all mixed up over here, guys. Let's get this straightened out before we uh, end up with the messed up truck here. <laughs> Alright. So, 
everybody usually puts the Loctite on the uh, screws. I like to shake it up and then we'll take it off the cap and I just set it a little dab right over the threads and it drops right in the threads guys and then I could set it up and screw it on there but I'm not going to yet because I still have to do the bearings into it so this is the left side of the truck here I'm going to flip it back upright that way I do not get this wrong because that's what you don't want to do yeah so I'm gonna have to wait till I put that on there because I gotta put the three screws so I put Loctite in it for no reason but anyway just to show you guys how I do how I do it how I get it done let's get this side off first since this is a side that I have sitting here Sorry guys for it being so loud. My kids are playing in the house when they should be outside. Son, can you close the doors to this room? Thank you. Because you guys are getting loud and stuff, so. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome, Dad. Alright. And this should have... I don't know if it has a screw for the for the top of this or not here. I don't know. Which is fine. I mean, I don't mind using the old hardware. It's not a big deal. Because it's all fine thread pitched screws anyway. Just like uh, how these are. In the, in the package for the uh, aftermarket stuff so you gotta take your uh, steering link off of course right and the reason why I'm gonna do one side at a time here is that way I get this side done then I can hook up all my links back up on that side and then take it off and then hook them up and then it's all connected and instead of having more stuff taken apart more screws laying around right and stuff like that so that'll just slide right out and uh, we'll push this little pilot bearing out of here and we'll slide it on the screw right here oh or drop it <laughs> set that there too so now we just got to take the three screws off right here which let me move that out of the way and show you guys we got three screws right here and we got three screws just like that that way you guys can see visually with them off and then on so we're going to take those three out and then there's a bearing that sits on the inside i believe and uh get that off and i'll show you guys that those should be a 1.5 or no 2.5 also these are even marked l2 So we'll get these guys off real quick. I think my phone's still recording. Let me check, guys. Yeah, she's still rolling. 20 minute long video here, guys. <laughs> Hope you guys don't mind it, but it's going to be a long video, guys. Long, long, long video. I'm going to set these guys here. I would do a drill just in case anybody's like, why don't you do it with the drill? It'll be faster. Oh, and in turn, it's noisier, louder. So, I'd rather have it like this so you guys can hear me blab on. Oh, sweet. There is no bearing. It just fits over the axle. I forgot. So, that's cool. Just pop right over it. So, we can just set this guy right on there like that should be able to yep fits right on there the screws line right up perfectly as you guys can see it all lines up just like it should so far so good we're going we're going great here okay so there's that so we'll get the uh, stainless 
still screws here and uh, we'll make sure they match the length of the uh, stock screw you always want to do that that one fits perfectly same length so we shouldn't have an issue with that guy that one's the same length yeah so we should have all of them for both sides in this one package yep same length and size so we're gold in there so the other side I'm not gonna bother checking no reason to put thread lock because it's going into the plastic and these are 1.5 these are 1.5 heads so they went from a 2.5 down to a 1.5 on your aftermarket stainless steel screws and the reason why I'm putting stainless steel screws guys is if I happen to run this in water these screws won't rust like your regular steel screws that are on the vehicle already. So we'll throw these and run these guys because I probably will run this in water. Nothing crazy. But, uh, you know, I will take it in water. Well, I'm surprised, guys. I barely have little tiny scuffs on the links. That's good. I'm trying to keep this. This is my shelf queen, guys. And... Like you guys will probably ask, just like my friend asked, why are you putting this stuff on your shelf queen and all the expensive stuff? Why not? You know, on my other TRX4 I use a lot. I'm going to, um, I'm going to put the, uh, I'm going to put the um, red, all this in red on it. So I'm going to buy brass here soon for that one too, guys. So don't worry. I will do that. So now we gotta take, we gotta take all these screws off. And uh, I think, yeah. And this, this should be the bag for the outer piece here. And it does come with the longer. Uh, shoulder top type screws for your links to bolt up your your steering links so that's cool and uh, once again like I said I'll check all the sizes when I get open that bag for these screws and uh, make sure they're all the same size thread pitch and length I always like to do that with all my screws just so I don't have an issue here nice pop the bearing right out all nice and greased up in there I should get my grease and grease these but I think there was uh, enough grease on these okay these are 2.5 now back to the 2.5s so we'll take these bad boys off these diff covers can be a pain on the front and the rear to take off if you don't want to take the whole axle off or drive shaft and all that out but it can be done and I'll show you guys that also when I get this off I'm really not looking forward to those bearings in there though guys that's gonna be a nightmare I really don't want to do that but I guess you got to if you don't want to buy waste money on buying new bearings no point because my other TRX4 has good bearings new bearings still in that one so and I barely ran that in water so I know they're still good and I maintenanced it too not too long ago when I when my when I was waiting for my radio to come in to it so last screw here guys on this so we got a total of six screws on the portal here we'll take them out Lay them all in one pile here, all together, so that way I can, like I said, test fit it all. And then we got two more, so we got eight on the total, got two on the front here. That you got to take off to get your bearings and your axle stub off. There we go, kind of toss that to the side there. <laughs> and all... The, Eight of these should be the same <clears throat> length, 
thread pitch and uh, and width size, if you will. Grab this guy, set it there, and then you just poop like that. Side so bearing, I don't. It's going to be a pain to get out, I'm sure. And then these two bearings here on this side, man. This time around, they really greased it up good, man. This time around, the other one. The first one, the first TRX4, they didn't grease it that good. On this guy, they greased them really, really good. I'm rather impressed. I just don't know how the heck I'm going to get these damn bearings out of here. That's going to be a challenge in itself. Hopefully I can get them out with this little flathead screwdriver here. There we go. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. Got that little guy out. Let's get this guy out. That one came out way easier than that little guy. And then we'll take this. And you pop this one in here. Like so. And then we get this cover. Because your little, your little guy goes in here. Like that. <sighs> If I can get it straight in there, or not, I may have to get this guy and push the top in because it doesn't want to go in there that easy for some reason. There we go. She's lining up now. There we go. All right, guys. So far, so good. They're fitting in there like they should. So we're doing we're doing really great here. So we're going to have the uh, axle shaft come out this side here, I believe. So we got one more bearing to pop in on this bottom guy. Your little axle stub comes out right here. So then we just slide it right over. And look at that, man. It lines up beautiful. Look at that crisp, crisp lines. Look at that, guys. That, that's nice. All the holes line up just like it should that's looking great man no axle play anywhere roll smooth as glass that's what I'm looking for right there that's beautiful that is beauty okay guys we pop in this back bearing for the axle shaft look at that that is smooth no play at all that is awesome man so far it's going together legitly and it comes with the little stainless steel screws right here that you need so i'm assuming these are for those okay kind of getting a little mixed up here with the screws but uh we'll figure that out all right get this little guy open and always like jamming rc says cut away from you that guy's all always all about safety, man. He, I like him how he's like, make sure you cut away from you, and you know, handle this tool that way and this way. And I mean, he's on it. That guy's on it. Okay, so we'll throw a little bit of dab because it's it's hard, guys, to put these on the thread of the screw when you're handling the screw. So that's why I put it on here. And then I drop the screw right onto it. That way I'm not wiping off the stuff off the screw, handling the screw. Okay, these should be a 1.5 also. There we go, 1.5. That's not good. These are stopping right away, so we might have to use these other guys not unless I'm using that's the same height that's not good something's wrong here not unless they don't go in that far to keep from damaging the uh, bearing here but it should go flush all the way down yeah I don't know why these aren't 
going all the way down in there. That's not good. Well, I'm going to have to tell Jeremy about that. So far, everything was fitting good. Until that. Oh. Let's set this. These screws can be a little bit of a pain in aluminum or brass, whatever. Yeah, this one's going. It's stopping too. What kind of. What the heck is going on here? They only go in so far. They're not touching the damn bearing. So, I'll just tighten it and then loosen it. Tighten it and then loosen it. And uh, should drop all the way on there. Because you have to like basically re-thread it for it to reach and sit where it should sit. So, so far that's the only problem I'm having right now. As these guys don't want to go all the way down the first shot. So, if you guys just go like that, back it off. And then, there we go. We got that one all the way in. Alright guys, I'm going to do that with this first one I installed. That way it'll sit. It'll sit all the way in there for me. Hopefully if I didn't already strip the screw out. Yep, I did. Good comment. Alright, get off there. No, that one's too small. What the heck? Yep, I stripped it. No. No. That one's not a big deal. As long as I got two out of the three actually hitting. That one's not that far. I can drill it out or something later on. I'm not worried about it because this is my shelf queen, so... I'm not going to be out there full blast snapping axle shafts like I am with the other TRX4. Let me get this guy down in there. There we go. And do the same thing with this one. That way I don't do what I just did by stripping it out. And it goes in actually fairly easy when I'm doing it this way. So it's a little more work, but I mean, really what isn't on these things? But just do that and I promise you guys these will go all the way in. But I'm going to tell my buddy Jeremy that way he can contact them because he's sponsored by GPM. And uh, get this properly situated and assist, assessed. There we go. So we got that guy in there all good and ready to rock and roll. Now let's open this other package here. And uh, get these all together. All these should be the same size. And for both sides, I hope. Yeah, they, they're for both sides. Same length, so we're good there. These should be a 2.5. Yep, 2.5. Alright guys, now I'm going to throw thread lock. Like that. Remember guys, just use blue thread lock. Don't use red because you'll never get it off. And I don't know that from experience because I watched... RC Sparks and stuff like that and he's like yeah definitely don't use red thread lock let's see if these guys go all the way in right hopefully they do and they're not they're getting a little too tight so I'll back it out 
and go back in. Well, that seems to work on everything. Some reason, I guess they didn't thread it deep enough from the factory, and that's not good. Because you should be able just to run these bad boys in and be done with it, you know? So, see, with name brand crap, you still have problems. I could see if I bought these straight from China or whatever, you know, a, a generic brand, not a name brand like these are. And uh, there you go. It just proves that China stuff isn't junk either. You know, you have the same problems with, with uh, you know, name brand stuff, guys. It just happens that way. It's just how the hobby is. But it's going down, guys, with me re-threading it like this. I just go back far enough to where it gets real loose, and then I run it back down again until she tightens it up. Just like that. There we go, guys. That one's all the way in and on. Now we got to just do the other side like this, which is more time-consuming, but hey. It is what it is. Rather show you guys behind the scenes and stuff like that that nobody really shows of the uh, hassles you go through with doing this stuff. It's not really modifications, but you know, still have hassles with stuff like this. But uh, we'll get this guy in there. My dogs are all barking and acting weirdos out there. Probably barking at the neighbor's dog over there. Alright, guys. Well, that's great. Just broke the head of the screw off. <sighs> yeah. Good thing it's sticking flush so that way I can get it off of pliers. That's wonderful. Now I gotta unscrew this side. I thought it was already touching and it wasn't. That was my fault. Yep. Everything always has to be a pain and you know what. Okay guys, let's pop this guy back off hopefully. Man, it's so perfectly matched that it's hard to get it to pop off here. There we go. Or not. Because <laughs> that stud is in there. That's why it's not wanting to come off so easily. 